Hello, everyone. Greetings. It is fortunate I found you. As soon as Ketgar and Akirantor teleport Dalaran to the Broken Isles, Druids are summoned by a Moon Rune Totem for a special mission at the Moonglade. I'll meet you there as soon as you conclude your business in Dalaran. Beating the Legion will require us to strike quickly and unexpectedly. They've discovered a the dream way by which we can travel through the Emerald Dream itself. Though only a short walk through the dream, it will allow us to cross vast distances on Azeroth and even access the ancient home of all druids, Valshara. Malfurion Stormrage is preparing the ritual to open the dream way and we need to summon Zentabra and Narlex to their side. Hey man, you not be coming to Zentabra for some fish. What you be wanting? There be life all around. Life worth saving. Don't so, be angry in the spirit. Time to see if we can really be making this happen. This gonna be needing everything we have to give and more. Hmm. The spirits. They be silent to me on this. That mean they not opposed to it either. Very well. I'll meet you at the ritual. No need to be quiet. The trees already whispered to me of your arrival. Is it time for the ritual to begin? Very well. I'll meet you there. Earth Mother, watch over. Now Furion waits for you by the Barrow Dens to the east. Follow me. The Legion's arrival has thrown our world out of balance. I've sensed great unrest within the Emerald Dream. There are powerful druids in Val Shirah who grew under Cenarius's tutelage after the Great Sundering. Their knowledge of Druidism is ancient and unparalleled. Having their might on our side is essential if we are to stop the Legion. Greetings to you both. The tremors from the Emerald Dream grow more potent. We must begin the ritual at once. The ritual will focus our energy into a portal at the center of the structure. We must keep it stable. Prepare yourself. Step into the circle when you are ready. Excellent. The path is taking form. It grows more stable by the moment. The Dreamway is ready. Good work, everyone. Melfurion will stay behind to protect Moonglades and make sure that it is well defended against possible attacks from the Legion, while we, together with Remulus, son of Cenarius, we enter the Dreamway. We've arrived. Come, we must find the Druids of Valshara and request their aid. No! The Nightmare! In this part of the dream? How is it possible? I will cleanse these nightmare vines from our path. Go forth and destroy the source of the corruption that spawned them. Now, I've already talked a fair bit about the Emerald Dream and the Emerald Nightmare before, in, for example, the story of Xavius and the story of Valshara. But for those unfamiliar, and since it is very important for the Druid campaign, in short, the Emerald Dream is an ethereal realm of spirits and untamed nature that exists alongside the world of Azeroth. The two realms are bound as one. As life ebbs and flows across the physical worlds, the spiritual energies that saturate the Emerald Dream keep pace with it. In the Dreamways, time and distance are mutable. Spirits flow like living winds through lush tracks of constantly shifting primordial woodlands. What appears tangible one moment becomes intangible the next. Seemingly impermeable landmarks transform in the blink of an eye. So all these difficult words from the Chronicles, basically it's it's a dream world connected to nature. It has different layers and Titan Keeper Freya once upon a time worked with this realm to shape flora and fauna on the world of Azeroth. She also connected the spirits of the wild gods to the Emerald Dream and she was the one who called upon the Titans to bless Yasira and turn her into the green dragon aspects, with her and her flight having dominion over the Emerald Dream. After the War of the Ancients, the world tree Nordrasil was planted over the new well created by Illidan, contain the power from the well and hide it from the Legion. Several blessings were placed upon her by the dragon aspects, amongst them Yasira's blessing, who granted the Night Elf Druids easier access into her realm. Malfurion Stormrage was the first Night 
himself to be trained in the ways of the Druids by the wild god Cenarius, but more would follow in his footsteps. One amongst them was Fendral Stackhelm, who couldn't resist planting happy little trees despite people telling him not to. He did it with the best intentions though, since the prisons containing the old gods, they'd weakened over time, great tendrils of corruption, they started spilling from the old gods' damaged prisons, and they gradually seeped to the world's surface. Norfrens, where the old god Yaxaran was imprisoned, that saw the most severe effects with a strange new mineral called Serenite sapping the life out of native flora and fauna. These trees that they planted acted like conduits. They channeled the power of the Emerald Dream into the waking world, strengthening the nearby wildlife and scouring the Serenite deposits. Heartened by their success, the druids planted the last and greatest of the branches in the mountains of Northrend over the largest grove of Serenite. This new world tree, named Andrasil, or Crown of the Snow, it grew with astonishing speed and the benefits were almost immediate. For several decades, Andrasil towered over Northrend and all seemed well, but what they didn't know was that the roots of Andrasil, they would burrow so deep that they came in touch with Yaxaran's prison and the old god used it as a doorway into the dream. A doorway through which even the other old gods could grasp the ethereal domain as well. Small seeds of corruption were spread through Ysera's realm. In time, these seeds polluted the dreamways and marked the beginning of what would be known as the Emerald Nightmare. The corruption of the nightmare was was later used by the old god Nazoth and his ally Xavius. Malfurion and several others, they found out about this corruption. They did defeat it, as well as the Nightmare Lords, but Malfurion found that he could not cleanse the entire dream of the Nightmare. Within an area of the dream called the Rift of Alm, he could push it no further, and he felt the ancient evil he had sensed in powering Xavius before. He realized that there was nothing more to gain from trying to push it further, and instead sealed off the vicinity around the Rift, knowing that the day was saved, but one day they would have to fight this war. As it turns out, this war is now upon us, as the nightmare has seeped into the dreamway once again. But it's only a little bit for now, and we're able to cleanse it and make way to the dream grove within Valshara. We made it. Ah, these forests are just as I remember them. An ancient magic protects the dream grove. Here, all brothers and sisters of the wilds will find sanctuary. Come. We must find the druids of Valshara and request their aid. Greetings, Archdruid Greathoof. We have traveled far to seek your aid. I've heard the land cry out, son of Cenarius. The Legion threatens us all. Then we must act swiftly and ready the weapons of old for war. The weapons of old? Yes. They would help indeed, but they are beyond our ability to wield. There is no one better suited for this task than this champion. Very well. Your task will not be easy, but I shall do all that I can to aid you. After this moment, druids go to obtain an artifact to wield in the war against the Legion, and upon returning, they're recognized for their accomplishments by Shondo Malfurion. Nature stands with you. Your efforts have not gone unnoticed. Time and again, you have proven yourself to be one of our finest. The strength, ferocity, and nobility you have shown are without peer. It is time you were honored accordingly. It is my honor to welcome you as an Arc Druid of the Cenarian Circle. May all the creatures of the wild celebrate your ascension. All together druids cheer for us, even good old Zenkiki in his little seal form. But we don't have much time to celebrate since the threat of the Legion is still out there. I place you in charge of the Grove's efforts here. I must travel to the south and seek out Cenarius. Only with his aid will we stop the Legion. Elune, guide your path. Melfurion goes out into Valshara to talk to Cenarius and wait for adventures to join him. Well, we pick our first zone to assault and we start leveling up. We also get the recruits, our first two champions, to do the hard work for us, namely Narelex and Zentabra. I would be glad to lend my skills to the Order, Archdruid. I have heard great things about you. My claws are sharpened and I'm ready to hunt. They won't even see me coming. 
We'll need more allies at our sides to be truly effective against the Legion, and a skilled dryad by the name of Sister Lilith is on her way to the Dream Grove, but we receive word that she may be in trouble. Zentabra is sent to aid her, and after completing the mission, we gain Lilith in our order and the ability to recruit Trends to fight with our champions. Not a moment too soon, since deep in the forest of Oshira, a small druidic outpost known as Shaldren Grove is under attack by satyrs. We send our champions and loyal Trends out to bring down Rothbringer Nesma and they come back with an inscribed leaf of ancient knowledge. Leaf Beard the Story can examine the inscribed leaf and provide new knowledge and improvements for the grove. Upgrades for Little Order Hall to make this beautiful place even better. Now there is still much that we don't know about the nightmare, and before we can truly fight it, we must understand how it spreads. A job perfect for our champions as they're sent to the roots of Sheladrasil in Valshera. Strange magic is seeping from beneath the roots of this world tree, and by bringing back some samples, Narlex will be able to study it. Yes, Goodbye I have the Lasher seed from the roots below Sheladrasil. Take the seed and plant it in the dirt right over here. No, this isn't right! Destroy the malevolent seedling before it escapes! Go to Archdruid Greathoof and tell him what transpired. I'll examine what's left of this thing. Go the with... nightmare's spread has gone further than we thought. I must meditate on this, Archdruid. After meditating for a bit, Renzar comes to the conclusion that it is what they always fear, that the Emerald Nightmare has found our world. We must call upon the ancient god Malorn, father of Cenarius. In order to contact him, we'll need to pick up the Sacred Relic of the Wild, a gift from the White Stag himself found at Malorn's refuge. Bro Bearmantle has been sent out ahead, but as we catch up with him, we find out that the place is in chaos. The survivors say that they were attacked by satyrs, and while most of the druids were able to escape, the shrine is still Still swarming with enemies. The shrine's leader, Silendra Gladesong, she stayed behind to recover Malorn's idol, and we must go in and help her. I will not give in! Listen to the wind. I owe you a say? great debt, Druid. I will not forget this. The idol! It's gone! Soon you will welcome death! With open arms! Selendra, can we still recover the idol? Use your feral form to heighten your senses. Between the three of us, we can pick up the satyr's trail. Using our feral instincts, we track down a couple of the Dark Fiend assassins until we regroup and we find a Dark Zealot, which has some information for Brawl and Selendra. The Satyr's leader has taken the idol into Moonclaw Vale, but he could be hiding anywhere. Surely one of these Satyrs will know where it was taken, so we kick the crap out of a couple of these Satyrs until they finally spill the beans about their leader. Glazius does not fear you, Druid. Face him if you want your precious idol. Lazius the Guileful. I have heard the name. He lurks in a cave east of the Vale. We'll meet you there. It's no use, Druid. You cannot fight us. Give up, Druid. Your ancient god cannot be saved. Well done, Archdruid. Take the idol back to the Dream Grove, and we will meet you there. We obtain the idol, but before we can unlock the powers of it, we'll need four manifestations of the wild, meaning an essence of ferocity, regrowth, balance, and tenacity. To find these essences, we consult with the protectors of the forest within the Emerald Dreamway. The Restoration Stone activates by healing a little tree, and upon doing so, the glimmer of Asina appears. We have seen Asina before, during the Cataclysm within Mount Hyjal, and this is an ancient guardian known as the Mother Wisp. In order to get the essence of regrowth, the Glimmer wants us to go into the Darkheart Thicket, where Oakheart, a loyal ancient defender of the grove, he's fallen to the Nightmare's corruption. Deep within his heart, he's still fighting, and we need to gather the essence of this great tree so that his ever-living soul may be used to fuel new life. The Guardian Stone, activated for me by swiping at it in bear form, and by doing so, the son of Ursoc appeared. 
In order to get the essence of tenacity, the son of Ursak wants us to go into Nelfarian's lair and bring down a monster known as Rokmora. There is none more unyielding and unbreakable than a creature of stone. The balance stone is activated by shooting a moonfire at a candle, and by doing so, the avatar of Aviana appears. In order to get the essence of balance, we're told to go into the Eye of Azora, defeat the Wrath of Azora, and slay this blasphemy of nature, an infusion of stolen arcane power which cannot be allowed to exist. Finally, there's the Feral Stone, which I had to approach while prowling, and upon doing so, the Echo of Eshemane appears. In order to get the essence of ferocity, we must seek a creature who has slain of thousands and is revered even by gods. She speaks of none other than the wolf Fenrir, whom can be found hunting in the eternal forest of the Halls of Valor. Good return to me when you've gathered enough essence of the wilds, Archdruid. I trust none other to accomplish this difficult task. Now besides our adventures within these dungeons, we also gain a new ally within the Order Hall, Yaris Darklaw, who is a skilled trainer amongst the Druids of the Claw and allows us to recruit them and use them on missions. Bro and Selendra also offer to become our champions. My strength is yours, Archdruid. Together we will protect the wilds. Come and be restored. I will call upon Elune to restore the injured and resurrect the fallen. Thank you, Archdruid more people to do our bidding, and a good thing too, since we need them to send the word out and get the druids to Nordvasil. We have the Isle of the Wilds, and we are empowering it, but we'll need the combined power of many druids to actually make it work. That's why we send our followers out to recruit a list of Dreamweavers. There's Graeme Silverclaw, a young druid with great potential, who led our scouts to the edge of Sudamar, but there they ran into a legion hunting party and they need assistance. Matoclaw, who led a team of druids into High Mountain to deal with the Harpies, but she's been cornered. Tissily Crow, who's in over her head since sea giants have captured her and she's being forced to battle in their underground fighting ring. Talza, who we haven't heard from ever since they went into Stormheim with a group of scouts, and considering the hostile Vrykwen in the area, it's likely they've been waylaid. And then finally, there's Celestine of the Harvest. The Temple of Alone is beset by Seder and the minions of the Legion. Now Celestine is helping them, but we will need her, so our followers go out, but we obtain the required essences. And finally, with all of that done, we're able to make our way to North Nordrasil and try to communicate with Malorn. But of course, that would simply be too easy, since in the Dreamway, we find out that Xavier's creatures, they've invaded our sanctuary. We're not sure how they got past our protective wards, but Amul does know for certain that they cannot be allowed to linger. Bashana Rune Totem, Hamul's daughter, blesses us with Alun's grace so we can channel her power and reverse the nightmare spread, while my Loon, she has heard the whispers of the Woodlands creatures informing her that the Dreamway was in trouble. She she came immediately, and there are so very many teeny tiny weensy little creatures that live here in the Emerald Dream, and they're all out there, all lost and alone. We take our flute with us, and we make sure to save them. The little creatures need our help! The last bit that we need to do in order to secure the Dreamway once again is bringing down Witherheart. He was amongst the first defenders to battle against the Nightmare, but he has fallen to total corruption. It pains Amul to say it, but we must destroy him, and so we do. Earth Mother watch over you. We will see you on the other side. In Nordrazil, Arch Druid. Until Rest your hands upon the idol, and we will begin the ritual. Druids of Azeroth, protectors of the dream, my sons and daughters. I must speak quickly, for my mind grows clouded. I sensed Shaladrasil's corruption and entered the Emerald Dream to destroy the Nightmare's source. Deeper and deeper I fought. When I arrived at the Rift, I saw their true strength. The nightmare will spread like a disease, festering and multiplying. It will engulf all of Azeroth and its twisted reality. 
I can no longer see the way back to the dream. I am trapped in a nightmare of my own making. Druids, my time is done. It is up to you now. The last time that we saw Malorn was during the Cataclysm, where he helped us against the forces of Ragnaros within Mount Hyjo. Now it seems like the White Stag is in need of our aid as he tried to fight the Nightmare all the way to the Rift of Aln. And it's the same location where Malfurion could sense that ancient evil that had empowered Xavius. That same location where he could push it no further. That pure source has twisted and warped Malorn's mind, trapping him within a nightmare of his own design. Good Malorn's warning cannot be ignored. The Great Father of the Forest is in dire peril, and we must help him, or the very wilds may be lost. We have to get to him and save him, but in order to do that, we have to reactivate a portal directly into the Rift of Alm that was closed a long time ago. To infuse it with the energy once again, we will need Shards of the Nightmare, which can be found on Seder Lieutenants. This is a job perfect for the champions, and we even gain two more of them, namely Amu and Mylun. I will stand by you, Archdruid. Let us fight for Azeroth! Oh, let me give you a big hug. We're going to save so many creatures together. Ten shards of the nightmare. That will be enough to power the portal, and we find the Seder lieutenants all over Azeroth. For example, within Moonglade itself, where a Doomguard called Metrion has rallied the Seder of Felwood and dare on the attack. There's Valshera, where Shalanir, the Druid Grove at the base of the World Tree, has been overrun by Seder and the leader Bainhoof. There's Ashenvale, where this Seder, led by Refazar the Fallen, have been spotted and may soon attack outright. And even the Naga don't stay out of this conflict, as we receive word that Oracle Tidecrest, a powerful Naga sorceress, has been meeting with the Dark Fiend Seder. Naga and Seder work it together, that simply won't do, so we send our champions out to call the Larto to slay her and her comrades. While our champions are dealing with collecting the shards, we keep ourselves busy with defending the Broken Isles. We must focus our efforts on defense before we can mount an offense against the Nightmare by helping our allies and completing 30 world quests. There's also a very special fairy dragon waiting for us in the Dreamway, namely Brightwing, who originally could only be found within Heroes of the Storm. Oh, hi new friend! I am Brightwing! Do you know about fairy dragons? Well... She's now made her first appearance within World of Warcraft, and she has a few requests of her own. Brightwing has lots of friends, but you know who isn't Brightwing's friends? Scary monsters from the Nightmare. They hurt Brightwing's allies, and they made the grove all yucky. This place needs to be cleansed, but she's all out of magic, so we need to go into the Eye of Azura and bring back some purified water taken from the cold dead bodies of the Naga. The grove is regenerating nicely after the Nightmare attack, and while we were able to save most of it, sadly, many living souls were lost as well. We're asked to take a bag of dream seeds and plant them onto fresh corpses. In time, new flowers will grow. And then finally, to finish her work here, she'll need a magical item called the Pendant of Starlight. For centuries, the Archdruids of the Dream Grove, they passed this pendant down from one guardian to the next. One day, a Naga Siren used deception to take it. This pendant stores a great amount of arcane power, power she can use to heal the grove. We track down Abyssal Queen Sharafra, who patrols along the coast of Valshera, and we bring back her pendant of the Keepers. Yay! I like you. Let's fight lots of enemies together. So now we defended the Isles, our champions have collected the Nightmare Shards, Brightwing is nice and happy, and the final component of power needed to reactivate the portal is 10 Blood of Sargeras. With that turned in, we finally have our way into the Rift of All, Malorn's Nightmare itself, and I have to say, it was definitely worth it. Inside, we get to choose a companion to join us. You get either Brawl as a tank, Salendra as a healer, Centabra as a melee DPS, or even my Loon as a ranged DPS. This entire scenario is a recreation of the darkest nightmare in Malorn's mind. This is the War of the Ancients, 10,000 years ago, in which Malorn and the Wild Gods fell. To free Malorn, we must win the War of the Ancients, so we enter the battlefield and we defeat Legion foes. We rescue Reviver allies and we free the innocents who've been caught in the battle. Every enemy defeated and every ally saved will help turn the tide in our favor, but we even have Yvelin and the Green Dragonflight to assist us from above. 
Now, like I said, I think this is truly worth it. My nerdy lore heart was loving this moment. I spent a solid 10 minutes just going around, seeing what characters were used and taking screenshots. This is actually the first time that we see this epic battle in the game in which the wild gods they take the stage during the War of the Ancients and their battle was pretty nasty. Sure, the wild gods were extremely powerful, but the sheer numbers of the legion overwhelmed them. Here are a couple of pieces taken from the War of the Ancients trilogy. Agamagan it was, who sped past the rest, the boar proving far more impenetrable than the stone heart demons as he plowed up both the ground and them in one sweep. Great Tusk skewered Felgard, then tossed the remains aside. Doomguard flooded up ahead, trying to lance the gargantuan boar, but those that attempted to get through the deadly force of thorns covering Agamagus' back instead ended up impaled. Dead demons still hanging from his mane, the demigod swung around, bowling over other infernals. The infernals scattered in utter confusion, this not at all the delicious devastation that they generally wrought. Their route in turn created further bewilderment among the Felguard, who had never faced a situation where their advanced force had been so utterly brought to ruin. Doom Guard whipped them on, but all the Felgard did was to continue to be crushed under the demigod's hooves or be mangled atop his tusks. Agamagan welcomed all such foolhardy foes with a gleeful snort. His eyes burned bright as he cleared the path before him, leaving an awful spectacle of his might behind him. The warriors of the Burning Legion lay piled high. Agamagan paused only when he had so many corpses caught on his forns that it proved time to shake a few off. The boar shook like a wet dog, flinging rag pieces of demons left and right. His coat cleared for more, the demigod lustily returned to his entertainment. Yet, despite such a horrific debacle, the demons kept coming. Jared's sword cleaved through the head of the first demon to survive Agamagus' passing. Scenarius seized another infernal, raised the struggling monster high over his head and threw him back among his brethren. For the first time, infernals discovered what it was like to be rammed by one of their kind. The force with which the demigod tossed his missile sent his target tumbling back into others, creating a chain reaction that went on several lines deep. The twin bears were much more direct. With heavy paws, they raked across the demon's ranks, bowling aside infernals and fell guards as if brushing leaves off their arms. Several fell beasts leaped through the crumbling wedge and adhered themselves to the foremost of the pair. He laughed and tore off the legion's hounds from his torso one by one, breaking their backs and sending the corpses flying into the deeper ranks of Archimonde's warriors. The wedge disintegrated. Doomguard flew in from above the whole back to chaos, but from the sky there came what seemed every Every bird in all the land. The demons spun about in panic as tiny finches and gigantic raptors tore at their flesh. And among the birds flew their mistress, Aviana, her delicate face now transformed into that of a hungry predator. The demigod's talons ripped through wings, sending doom guards spiraling to their deaths. Others she seized in an inescapable grip, then used her sharp beak to tear out their throats. Archimond was not so easy defeated though, and as the demons tried to leave the battlefield, he showed him that not fearing him more was a very big mistake by melting them, their armor and flesh sliding off their bones like soft wax. This quickly showed the others that death was waiting on both sides and it came in many forms, some more terrifying than the others as they resumed the fight without regard for their own safety. Wild gods started to fall, including the mistress of birds. Guided by the will of our command, Doomguard with lenses fought the way through the flux toward the one that they sought. Two dozen demons perished along the way, but too many more achieved their goal, surrounding the guardian of all winged creatures of Kalimdor and piercing her with their long barbed spears. But even the blood of the demigoddess fought for her, dripping down the lances of her slayers and pouring onto their hands. As she fell, lifeless, her assassins tore at their own hides, her blessed blood now infesting their unholy bodies. In the end, the Doomguard died to a one, rendered themselves to pieces, trying to escape what they they could not. Lances and blades now stuck out of the hides of both bears, and Cenarius had wicked cuts all over his body. Every other demigod bore similar marks of the legion's brutal strength, but still they pushed on. A pack of fell beasts caught one of the bears by surprise, leaping atop their victim and quickly bringing down the giant. Before the gargantuan adversary even hit the ground, a score more joined the first pack. Their suckers immediately adhered to the third body and the monsters drank lustily of the guardian's inherent magic and thus life. 
The Followans twin roared angrily when he saw what had happened. Pummeling aside Felgard, he threw himself upon the horrific leeches. One by one, the demigod tore them away from the unmoving form, ripping off heads and breaking backs in the process. But when he had reached his twin, it was immediately evident that rescue had come too late. Raising his head high, the forest guardian roared his pain, then turned on the ranks of demons and began rampaging through their lines as if they were made of paper. Despite lenses and other weapons constantly pincushioning him, he dug deeper into the burning legion, swiftly leaving behind his other companions until he could no longer even be seen. Brox and Jarrett, closest to the front, they heard his lost, unrepentant roar and noted grimly the silence that followed. It was Cenarius who still led Kalimdor's epic guardians, and he tore at the demons with a violence that shocked even Ronin and Kresis. His gnarled talons stripped through armor and flesh, spilling the monster's warrior's innards upon the field. The forest lord fought as if one possessed, and with the death of each fellow guardian, his efforts grew more terrifying, more relentless. He seemed determined to make up for all those who had fallen, no matter the cost to himself. And fall, they continued to do. With Felgard clutching him like hounds worrying their prey, the great boar Agamagan finally teetered. He rammed into several fell beasts, tossing them up or goring them with his tusks. But then at last, the weight of so many demons proved to be too much. The demigod dropped to his knees, where his tenacious adversaries began chopping in earnest at his torso. The huge beast shook off some of those clinging to him, but that proved to be his last effort. Blood dripping from a hundred deep wounds, he groaned and then stilled. Even after, the savage attacks on his body did not cease. The demons so caught up in the butchery that they did not realize that they had slain him. The latest death spurred Cenarius yet further until he could go no more and was need of aid himself. It was his father, Malorn himself, that entered the battlefield to save his son and have the defenders drag him back. Kneel, Arkham on! You will not be allowed further! The, the very soul of Azeroth rises against you! The ranks of demons parted, and through the ominous gap strode Archimond himself. With each step toward the stag, Archimond swelled in size until he stood as tall as his adversary. In contrast to his manic warriors, the demonic commander remained stone-faced, almost analytical. He held no weapons, but his clenched fist radiated the same monster's fire that burned around the stag. The demigod shook, breaking away the earthly claws. Then, with a challenging snort, the demigod lowered his antlers and met the archdemon. Their collision was marked by thunder and a tremor that toppled fighters for some distance around. Demons and night elves alike fled the awesome fury of their duel, where the stag's hoof struck the harsh ground, sparks flew up into the heavens. Archimon's own feet dug deep, creating ravines and tossing up new hills taller than his warriors. Bloody scars traced the paths of the demon's claws in the stag's hide. Sharp glistening dots from which burst green fire showed where antlers had pierced Archimonde's seemingly impervious skin. Demon and demigod wrestled, and no other living creature dared to come in their paw. From the battlefield came a terrible cry. As they all turned towards its source, they witnessed Archimonde with one arm around the giant stag's neck, his other hand twisting his foe's muzzle to the side. Already the stag's head turned at an awful angle, hence the cry. Crassus leaped to his feet. No, he must not! But it was already too late. The demon, his expression still indifferent, tightened his hold further. A tremendous cracking sound echoed through the region, one that, for just a brief moment, caused all other noises to cease. And in Archimonde's grip, Cenarius' valiant rescuer fell limp and lifeless. With an almost flagrant detachment, the archdemon tossed aside his adversary, as one might discard a piece of refuge. He then wiped his hands and gazed at the stunned defenders. It's not hard to imagine why this moment is Malorn's worst nightmare, but that's just it. It's a nightmare. We haven't gone back in time. Events don't have to play out the way that they did, and so we change the outcome. We turn the nightmare back into the dream as we defeat Archimonde and we save Malorn out of the clutches of the Emerald Nightmare. The veil is lifted from my eyes, heroes. The shadows retreat and the dream beckons. Thank you, heroes. Today, we dealt a great blow to the unseen enemies of the Nightmare. However, Xavius, Lord of the Nightmare, still lives. 
Only when he is defeated will Azeroth truly be safe. To accomplish this task, I gift you with my blessing. Use my power to serve and protect the wilds. Thank you, Druids of the Dreamgrove. May you prosper under the leadership of your new Arch Druid. Farewell. Malorn is safe, and the statue left behind grants a blessing to anyone who gazes upon it. Remulus informs us that the elders of the Dreamgrove, they've spoken and all of them agree. They would like us to take leadership of the Dreamgrove. Today, they grant us the title of Archdruid of the Dreamgrove, a nomination of the highest honor in their order. With it, we now carry the responsibility of their order to protect the wilds, and to help us with this, Remulus decides to become a champion. It is my honor to fight with you, Archdruid. Together, we will protect the balance of nature. Come with me to the Seed of Ages, Archdruid. There, we will unlock additional mysteries of your weapon. Go with scenarios. Ever have you been a fierce defender of the wilds? The skill with which you wield your ancient weapon proves you worthy to be our champion. Now, through the victories you've achieved, and the resources you've gathered, we can awaken your artifact's full potential. Let the seed of ages infuse your weapon with power. Watch it grow mightier than ever before. Nature's essence flows through your weapon. In your hands, it shall make the dark forces threatening Azeroth tremble. Undo Falador! The Lord of Nightmare, Xavius himself, is still out there. Shaladrasil is still corrupted, and we haven't even finished up the story within Darkheart Thicket, where Malfurion is waiting to be saved. However, that's a story for later this week, since for now, I think we've done enough. I really hope that you enjoyed the story of the Druid Order Hall campaign. And as always, thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed this one. And until next time guys. See ya!